I want to dedicate today's learning today to Rufu Hashem Akreva of Shaina Hany Tsipuria Baschayo Chavet. Shaina Hany Tsipuria Baschayo Chavet is a two year old girl, friend of mine's daughter, who uh, unfortunately had a stroke uh, a little over uh, a week ago. And Baruch Hashem, she's doing a lot better. We need a Rufu Hashem. Shaina Hany Tsipuria Baschayo Chavet. Lachayim Racha. Jews get together and say Lachayim, it does something. Lachayim Racha. Lachayim Lachayim. So, a lot of people always wonder, who am I really? A lot of things that we do, a lot of things we think, a lot of things we feel. How can you discover who you really are? Sometimes people feel very lost trying to figure out who they are. And this week we actually read about the mitzvah of returning a lost object. The Torah says... If you notice that someone's donkey, someone's ox, someone's sheep, someone's clothing has gotten lost, there's a mitzvah to return it. The Torah repeats this also in Parshat Shemot. You find someone lost something, there's a mitzvah to give it back. Everything that we read about in the Torah has a message, an insight for ourselves, including the things we read about animals. There's a pasuk, Adam Toshia Hashem. God saves a person and an animal. So the, the Hasidic masters explain whatever you find in an animal, you can also find in a person. And not only can you also find it in a person, but the truth is, it says in Tanya that whatever that happens in this physical world, it really comes from the spiritual. It's drawn from the spiritual world above us. So whatever we see here, any characteristic we see here in, in, in animals, etc., it comes from something spiritual. So the Torah mentions the laws of returning a lost object twice, but in each of those places it mentions four items. And really, I mean, when anyone loses anything, it's a mitzvah to return it. Why does the Torah mention these four items? And the answer is because these are four things that can get you lost. These are also four items that can help you find, back, find your way back. These four characteristics the Torah refers to, a ox a donkey, a sheep, and a garment, they all represent characteristics within ourselves that could either bring us down or could lift us up. And an ox represents passion, fire. Ox represents, you don't want to get in, in the way of an ox, you know, an ox is a goring ox, it could damage someone, so an ox represents our passions. What what lights you up? What makes you excited? It's important to know where your, where the, your passions go, where your, where your energy is, what, what gets you emotional. Some people, they get very emotional when they hear someone's in trouble right away. They, oh, they, they, they light up, I have to help this person. Some people light up when the, there's something that leaves much to be desired. That's what makes them excited. There was this guy, one, some people like prefer movies which are like thriller movies, like suspense movies. This guy was got this. He rented this suspense video, this uh, thriller movie, and he gets up to the scene, like the the high point of the movie, and his baby starts to cry. So he wants to, uh, you know, hear what happens. He tells the baby, "Sha," and babies don't speak in that language, you know. So he tells me, you know, he starts moving the carriage, "Sha, sha," and the baby's not being quiet, and so he puts a pillow on top of the baby. And now you can watch, you can focus on the scene. Ah, now I can hear the, now I can hear the movie. Unfortunately, the guy kept on watching. He forgot about the pillow on the baby. Achmanol Slan, and the uh, the baby was lost. So sometimes we can get lost also with this this element of shore, this element of what gets us emotional. It could get us lost. But on the other hand, although it can get us lost, as I mentioned before, everything, all these four characteristics have a holy spiritual counterpart also. There's something that, that's positive about all these four things. They can get us lost, they can also help us home. Remendel Futafas, the great Hasidic mentor, used to say, if you want to know what you need, listen to your animal soul. Listen to your, where your animal is. So if you find yourself passionate about the wrong things, that means your ox isn't getting attention. Your ox is going for the wrong things. So that means you may be living a life a little too dry. Maybe you're doing mitzvot, you're learning Torah, you're being kind, but you're not, you're, it's, not, it's not touching your, your fire in your heart. It's not touching your emotions. It's just something which is external. It's not, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't light you up. So the Torah says if you find that you're 
that you're, you, you can't lock up your ox. Your ox is going to go somewhere. It needs an outlet. If you're not going to direct your ox in the right direction, it's going to go bolt in the wrong direction. So if you find all your passions going haywire to the wrong things, you have to listen to your animal. God's telling you something. Listen to your animal soul. What's it saying? It's saying, I need attention. I need to go somewhere. You need to use me for good things. So take the, that passion, that excitement, and to direct, direct it towards, towards the good things. That's the ox. Then there is the donkey. A donkey is apathetic. A donkey comes to the word chomer, chamor. comes from chomer, which means very materialistic, very physical, very, I am the way I am, and that's all the way I am, and apathetic. Donkeys represent coldness, and nothing moves, nothing gets a donkey exciting, excited. There was this guy who used to always collect charity in every big nest, at every synagogue, and this rabbi was visited by a lawyer. The lawyer says, do you know Shmero? Shmero? Of course I know Shmero. Shmero, Shmero hangs on the synagogue. Well, guess what? Shmero, I'm looking for Shmero because Shmero just got this inheritance in Israel. True story. It's five brothers, and the parents left for them a house and a whole lot. And the way they divided the, 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 value, the value of the real estate, they gave the house to two children and the lot to the other three children. That's how they divided it. And Shmero is a part owner in the house. So speak to Shmerl. He has, he has, you know, this is his lucky day. So the rabbi, Rabbi Slavatitsky in Belgium, goes over to Shmerl and says, Shmerl, guess what? I have great news for you. Shmerl looks at him with his eyes, anayin kvoyot, you know, eyes which are distinct, which are extinguished, no fire in them. He says, guess what? You know, your, your parents had this house and this lot. Well, they, you're in inheritance now. Shmerl's like, eh. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. He says, Shmero, he wants to wake up Shmero. He says, Shmero, where are you eating tonight? I don't know, I'll be okay. Shmero, where are you sleeping tonight? I don't know, I'll be okay. Shmero, you could live like a king. I'm going to get you a ticket to Israel. You live like a king. You don't like the house. You could sell the house. You could live like a king. Why do you want to do this? All right, all right, thank you, thank you. The rabbi tried three or four times to get Shmero to want to do this, and Shmero just wouldn't budge. Finally got Shmero to lease a sign and selling the house, but Shmero never went to go pick up, the, never went to do the steps to actually collect what was owed to him, because Shmerel was living like a chamor, apathetic. He lost the shore. The, the donkey is exact opposite of the ox. The ox represents the fire and excitement of life. The donkey represents the apathy. And you have no interest at all in, in what's going on in your life. and You, you lost that fire in life. It, it, unfortunately, in Ashwaz, Rahman al so Somer Allah used to say on Yom Kippur, we say, who will die with fire? Chas Hashem, who will die with water? Rabbi Allah used to say that when someone is drowns in the water, the body remains intact, but it loses the whole, the, whole, the whole soul, the whole life. Sometimes in Auschwitz, there were, there were people who were officially still alive, they walk around holding bread tightly in their hands, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat it. They wouldn't eat it because they didn't want to live. On the other hand, their, their instinct, their body, made them hold on to their bread. So they hold on to their bread, but they wouldn't eat it. They would just walk around like, like zombies, holding on to the bread, but not eating it. Not, that, that's that's the, the, the negativity in in the donkey. Donkeys also exist in, in, in marriage. You could have a husband and wife getting angry at each other because the husband says, I don't know why she says this to me. And the wife says, why does he talk to me that way? That's okay. That's, that, 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 that means you still care about what the other person says. But the problem really is when you say, I don't care what they say. I don't, it doesn't bother me what they say. The fact that you're getting angry, you're getting annoyed, you're getting insulted, that means that, 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 that you care. Like you okay, have a child who says, ah, I'm going to my room and I just want to sleep, I just want to do nothing. It looks like the parents have like, oh, great, we can have a vacation now. This child's not doing anything. It wasn't before this child was like driving us crazy. And now the child is doing nothing. Great, he's quiet. It's dangerous. Dangerous. A child's doing nothing is dangerous. A child doesn't have any interest in doing anything. It's, it's, it's a da- the child's worse. The child's at least fighting. Like, I do th- what would you rather have in your, in your class? You know, a child who's, who's always fighting with the teacher or a child who's just zoned out? In a way, the child who is zoned out is worse off than the child who is fine, because at least this, he cares about something, he's alive. So the donkey seems to be a very negative character trait, this apathy. There's also a positive kind of characteristic in a donkey. Donkeys have this, this stubbornness. As it says about Yosef at Tzadik, Bechor Shoro Hadarlo, Yosef at Tzadik is compared to an ox, which represents passion and excitement. And, but there's also, there's advantage in excitement, there's also an advantage in chamor. What's the advantage of a donkey? There was this boy, 
turning by mitzvah. The parents weren't religious at all, not, didn't know anything about Judaism, but they were close to some Chabad rabbi, and the, and the mother knew that her son had to have a bar mitzvah, so she invites the rabbi to teach her son for the bar mitzvah. Teaches the son for the mitzvah, and the kid loves it. He's, wow, this is amazing. What, tell me more, tell me more. And he tells him, he teaches him, and the boy's like, I want to go to Jewish school. From now on, Ma. The mother's like, okay, you can go to Jewish school. And they go to a Jewish school. Go to Jewish school, and the principal says, okay, so what do you know about Judaism? I, I love it. So what do you know about it? I know I want to learn more about it. But what do you know already? Do you know how to read Hebrew? No. Do you know um, the holidays? No. Have you ever heard of Yom Kippur? No. So um, actually, you want to go in eighth grade? Eighth grade is full. So sorry, eighth grade is full. She, the teacher didn't want to make the boy feel bad that the boy is not able to do it. Just said, eighth grade is full. So the boy goes back to his mother. And mother says, oh, we'll try another school. Try another school in the third school. Every school says the same thing. We love to accept your trouble. They make an excuse. They come to one school. The boy, the principal says the same thing. We love to with an excuse. The boy says, okay, I'm okay with that. Just can you write it down on a piece of paper? <laughs> the principal gets, gets nervous. What is this, a court case? You're going to sue me because I wrote... No, the boy says like this. Listen, I want to hold on to this piece of paper for the rest of my life. I'm going to put it in my pocket and hold on to it as long as I live. And when I die, I want to be buried with this piece of paper. And I come to the heavenly court, and they're going to ask me, how come you didn't learn about your grandparents, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and your grandmother, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah? How come you don't know about them? I'll say, look at the paper. This is the paper. This is what the principal said. That's why I don't know. So the principal heard that, and the principal started to cry. And the principal said to the boy, from now on, you're my son. You'll stay in my house. And I'm going to teach you and learn with you until you're ready to go to school. And this boy became a very prominent rabbi. That's the power of chamor. The power of chamor, the power of being stubborn in the right way for the right things. Then there is a third characteristic, which is the sheep. But before getting, you get to the sheep, when you see in yourself this, this, this stubbornness, you have to ask yourself, am I using it for the right thing? You have it. You're born with it. That's what you notice in yourself in a negative way. You have to listen to your animal soul. God's talking to you. You have, you've seen yourself as stubbornness. Do you use it for the right thing? You're stubborn for the right things. There, there is a pasuk, Ashrei ha'am shakachalo. What shakachalo mean? Shakachalo, one explanation is, fortune of the people, shakachalo. One ex- another explanation is that they had this kacha kind of tendency. You have to be very specific and obstinate about your connection to Hashem. We have two parts of the film that we wear. We have lulav and etrog. We have eight candles. We have one mezuzah. We have four uh, corners of our tzitzit. We have eight strings. Everything we do, why do we do all these numbers? Why the numbers? Just where tzitzit, lulav, what, what, what's the numbers for? Because a Jew has to know his connection to Hashem has to be dafka, has to be specific. I'm sticking with this. This is what I'm going to do. This is what Hashem wants me to do. I need to be stubborn about it. This is the way it is. It can't be a different way. That's, it's, it's a power of stubbornness. Don't ask why. We have, imagine a, a, a husband tells his wife, whatever the wife does, he says, you know what? It doesn't matter what you're saying to me. I am staying with you no matter what. The child says to a father, a father says to a child, you are my child. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm not letting go of you. I'm not letting go of you. So Jew tells Hashem, he has to have this chamor, he has to have this donkey-like stubbornness. I am staying with Hashem, doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter, I'm staying with Hashem. Doesn't matter what happened. Here, that's the, that's the donkey. Then there is the sheep. What's the sheep? The sheep is something that doesn't have a backbone. Sheep is always drawn where the flock goes. People have no backbone. They have no, they, have no, uh, they go wherever, the, whichever side is stronger, whichever side is the majority. The herd mentality, you know, they just follow what everyone else is doing. This was the story of Avraham and his brother Haran. Avram, before he became Avram Avinu, Avram, the father, the, 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 one, the founder, the father of all faith in God, he was an idol worshiper. But when he was an idol worshiper, he was a good idol worshiper. He was sincere about idol worship. He loved the, the idols he prayed to. He was into it. And when the king of the world, Nimrod at the time, told Avram Avinu, either you pray, bow down to me or I'll throw you in the fire, he said, I'm going to go in the fire. And then he's thrown in the fire and miraculously he survived. What happened to his brother? They said to his brother, hey, Whose side are you on? So his brother was thinking the whole time, I'm going to watch this. If my brother, if his God saves him, I'm on his God's side. What happened to Haran? They asked him, whose side are you on? I'm, on? I'm with Avram. They threw him in the fire and he burnt. Why did he burn? Because he wasn't really on Avram's side. He was on, he had no side. You know, a lot of people, they just stay in the middle. It doesn't matter, they don't have a side. They just follow whatever this, this, this um, father-in-law 
tells his son-in-law, I'm going to give you a gift for your wedding. I'm going to give you an uh, Esther Martin in those days, a brand new donkey. Okay. So he has to go home with his wife and they go on the donkey and he lets his wife ride the donkey and he pulls the donkey, he pulls the donkey and he comes to, the, to, to a town on the way that they travel very far and everyone in the town's like, hey, ball and chain already? She's already you know, on top and you're on the bottom? This is the way it is? Ha! You just got married and you don't have any backbone? What's the matter with you? Oh, this can't be this way. Can't be this way. You know what? Sorry, 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 sorry. You know what? You walk, and I'm going to sit on the donkey. So his wife goes on the, starts walking. He still goes on the donkey. They come to the next town. That's the way you honor your wife. Chutzpah. You let your wife walk. So they said, okay, you know what? We'll both sit on the donkey. We both sit on the donkey. They come to the next town. It must be Los Angeles or San Francisco. Poor donkey. You're both sitting on this donkey, this poor donkey. You can't go on the donkey. You let the, the poor donkey, both of you sitting on the donkey. Okay, okay, they go off the donkey. They come to the next town. Why is no one riding on the donkey? So the husband and wife say to each other, you know what, let's pull the donkey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the um, way the power of the energy of the sheep is. The sheep is just to follow people around. And it seems like a very negative characteristic. There's a teaching of the Gemara, very powerful teaching. Gamara says, you should, if your teacher is like an angel, you should ask him to teach you Torah. If he's not like an angel, don't ask him to teach you Torah. <laughs> what does it mean? Do you know what angels look like? Do you know, I mean, do you see someone who has wings? Like, what, and what does it mean, ask him to teach you Torah? Do you learn Torah from him? Why is it the Talmud would say, ask him to teach you Torah? What it means is like this. Angels have this thing. They only, they only can do one thing and that's it. Angels just do one thing. Angels just are, are they have one mission and then they're done. So you could have a, someone who's very knowledgeable. I know, uh, unfortunately, I had, I, had a, I had a spiritual mentor like this. He was very knowledgeable and very, uh, but he was always busy. He never, he never could like focus and like answer my questions. So I didn't know this. I, 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 I was stuck. I was, I have to ask, speak to him. <laughs> I couldn't get through it to him because just was he, would, he was he was never present. He was never present. And so the Torah says, you want to get someone to give you guidance in life. There's one characteristic. He has to be like an angel. He has, to be, he has to be able to focus on you and able to hear you. And so the sheep is the opposite. The sheep is... All of us today are a little like the sheep because of our cell phones. Cell phones aren't only... Uh, have negative... Um, open the door for a lot of bad things. But besides that, the very fact you're on a cell phone, you're on a hundred different things at the same time, you're on a hundred different chats, you're on a hundred different messages. So that causes you to be scatterbrained, not, not to be present. That's what Haman, Haman told Achashverosh in the story of Purim. He said to Achashverosh, there is one nation among your, among your, among your uh, there's one country, there's one people among your, your nation, your kingdom, thank you, and they are scattered among all of the world, scattered all over. That's a simple thing he was saying. Your, your, your Jewish sheep are scattered all over. There's a deeper meaning. Yesh, no, I'm echot, says Baal Shem there is one nation. The essence of this nation is Hashem echot. The essence of this nation is the godliness. The essence of this nation is the oneness of Hashem. But mafuz are mafura, but they're all scattered brain. Their hearts are one place, their eyes are another place, their mouth is another place. They're not, they're not in touch with who they are. So the Torah says, you find in yourself this characteristic of a sheep. You find yourself being drawn in different directions. You have to listen to yourself. What, what do you need to do with that? You need to use that power to follow Hashem, to follow your teacher, to, to use that characteristic, this spineless characteristic, to follow Hashem. That's why King David said, I am like a sheep, King David said. I'm like a lost sheep. What's the advantage of a lost sheep? The advantage of a lost sheep is that I'm... Fo- I'm sheep always have this thing. They're always davening. Sheep, sheep are always davening. So we learn from the sheep, the people sometimes they feel lost and they turn to Hashem. They say, Hashem, I need guidance. That, that's why you have to use your spinelessness when it comes vis-a-vis how you relate to Hashem and the Torah. You have to feel like, this is where it is. Just let go. That's the power of the sheep. That's what Torah tells us to listen to the sheep. And then there is a fourth characteristic. The fourth characteristic is the characteristic of the garment, the beget. In Hebrew, the word for beget, cl- uh, clothing, is the same letters as the word bogate. Bogate, which means treachery, which means a lie, which means something which isn't real. A lot of people, they want to buy a Ferrari, they want to buy a Rolex, because they want to get in touch with who they think they are. So they buy all these expensive items to reveal and to get in touch with their real self. But these people, when you get close to them, you discover that 
they're very empty. That these things that they bought don't give them any anything. On the contrary, it leaves them very very empty. So the Torah is saying that there are sometimes you could find a garment, you could find the clothing, and you don't have the man behind the clothing. Sometimes you could find the person, the person doesn't have the clothing. There was a chassid of the Rebbe Maharash. In those days, it was it was it became it began to become fashionable to have one of these pockets. So he. He was, you know, doing a lot of business with a lot of people. So he, it wasn't really the thing for Hasidim to do, but he was hanging around a lot of non-Jews, and he got one of these pockets. And he came to visit his Rebbe, and his Rebbe sees he got, he's a new guy, he's a cool guy with, with a new pocket. You know, he ended up with the flowers in there, whatever. He has a pocket. So the Rebbe says to him like this, he says, there's an expression in Yiddish, a Yid bizdir keshna. Yid bizdir keshna means I'm a Jewish until my pocket. Which means I learn Torah, I daven, but when you ask me for it, stuck, ah, that's where I stop. <laughs> I'm Jewish up to my pocket. So Rebbe Rashab said to him, if your pocket's over here by your trousers, by your pants, okay. So then you're a Jew, at least from your head to your halfway. You're, you know, your heart and mind, it's all up to your pocket. But you put a pocket over here, there's very little Jew left. Mm-hmm. Very little Jew left. Mm-hmm. There was another chassid of Rebbe Marash, similar thing, his name was Rebbe Shainer. Rebbe Shainer. He... Uh, moved to a far away from his hometown in the city of Lubavitch, you know, the, 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 and, and he started to adapt a little bit to the customs of the people around. And, and so one of the Hasidim who was visiting his Rebbe, the Rebbe Rashab, he said, how is this guy doing? Ah, he's already ruined. He's ruined? Why is he ruined? He's wearing a tie. He's wearing a tie in those days meant you're, you're now you're opening yourself up to, to, to all this, uh, this Gaisha stuff, all this negative stuff. So Rebbe Rashab, Rebbe Rashab asked the question. He says, where does he wear it? <laughs> I don't know. One day, it's very funny, actually. You ask. He, he wears like this. He wears like that. He wears mine. He doesn't know how to really wear it. He says, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So the idea of of a, of a beget of a garment is that you're trying to become someone by acting. You're trying to fit in with the crowd. Trying to act a certain way to be someone that you're not. And the Torah says that you have to realize that that, that, that you're not accomplishing anything. There was, on the other hand, there's something very positive. Something very amazing about the power of clothing, about the power of, of the treachery, if you will. The Talmud says that when, when the um, temple and the Jerusalem was conquered, the non-Jews were afraid to go into the temple. So what they do? They asked this guy named Yosef, who was known to be a traitor, someone who rebelled against the Jewish people, he was, didn't consider himself part of the Jewish people, they say, Yosef, we, we're a little bit, um, we need someone to walk in there. Uh, just, just walk in there. You know, you're Jewish. You walk in there. Why do you want to walk in there? Just, just walk in there. If you walk in there, you can take anything you want from the temple. Anything you want. Anything I want. Anything you want. He walks in the temple. What does he take from the temple? He takes the golden menorah. They, walk, they, they, they say, whoa, 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 whoa. Anything but that. That's the golden menorah. You can't take that. So they said, listen, that we're going to keep. But go back in there. Take anything else that you want. So this already you said, I'm not going I, I got angered my God one time, I can anger him again, and he refused to go in. They said to him, we'll, we'll pay you, we'll let you off the taxes. He said, I'm not going in again. What ended up happening to him, this treacherous Jew, this Jew who rebelled against the Jewish people, the one who walked in to steal the menorah, you know what happened to him? They beat him until he died. He refused to go in again. So although he's treacherous, the Torah says that when Yaakov came to get a blessing from Yitzchak, the Torah says he... he smelled the fragrance of his clothing and he blessed him. It says the fragrance of his clothing means reach begadav means reach bogdav. The fragrance of those Jews who look like they're renegades, the ones who are against the Torah, they can't stand the Torah, they hate it, they rebel against it. So what, so Hashem says, you think that's who you are? You think that's who you are? That's not who you are. Your treachery, your begida is itself begida. You're, you're saying to yourself that you're not really part of the Jewish people, isn't who you are. That's the meaning of the Pasuk we say in Elul, ha'amanti ke'adni adaber. I believe because I speak. You want to discover who you are? You feel in yourself this, this, that you're going after other people, trying to copy them. So Hashem says to you, I have an idea for you. Copy your true self. Tra- copy your inside. Say the words of Torah. Put on film. Give tzedakah. Do the things that you know you're meant to do. Pretend. Fake. Give someone a compliment, even though you don't mean it. Say a nice word to someone, even though you don't mean it. Dre- wear those articles of, of spiritual clothing that you're not, you don't feel you're deserving of. And then you'll discover that this is your real self. So the bottom line is, the Torah is telling us in this parasha, you find yourself lost, you find yourself being drawn different directions. Those four characteristics can bring you down. But these four same characteristics are also 
what will lift you up and bring you to become in touch with 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 who you are inside. It, it's not only. Um, I shared the story I think before very briefly. There was a woman who she came to the rabbi. She told the rabbi she's a narcissist. She, what should she do? She everything she does is just just for herself. So the rabbi said to her, when it comes to studying in a in a uh, seminar for a woman, the rabbi said to her, give someone else at the seminar whatever they need at the meal time. Give them a drink. Give them food. Try to serve someone else by the meal time. In other words, Torah saying. You try to fake it, pretend you're there, and that will d- help you discover your, your inner self. So you have to, we have to listen to our animal souls, see who our animal souls, ta- which animal is talking in us, whether it's the sheep, whether it's the donkey, whether it's the ox, whether it's the garment, and uh, that's how we'll discover who we are and we need to be. And Hashem should give us a free chanel, a happy elul, and we should, we should see Mashiach Tzakeinu now. L'chaim. Amen. L'chaim. 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 L'chaim.